In this quick tip, I'll show you a way you can use Akai's Access software for Mac and Windows, which first appeared back in 1998. With Access installed, you could use it to edit just about every aspect of an Akai program and or multi, as well as load and save files from your computer into your MPC 4000, Z4, Z8, S5000 or S6000 over a tethered USB cable while using a graphic interface which I find resembles the features of a synth and therefore a little more intuitive that is if you have any previous synth experience. Unfortunately Axis is not compatible with 64-bit operating systems but I'll show you a rather crude method using an older Mac or Windows PC as a go-between that does allow you to use it from a modern 64-bit operating system. For best viewing, I recommend watching the clip on a laptop or larger display, such as a TV, etc. Put the clip in full screen mode and set the resolution to 1080p via the settings widget down on the bottom right. If you enjoy the clip, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, feel free to share, and if you're needing sample packs, then check out the ToneLab store at store.tonelab.au, where there's sample packs ready to play in your sampler's native format. Last of all, those needing drum machine tuition or other studio support services, one-on-one -on -one remote sessions are available. Check the description below for details. With that aside, if you have an old Mac or Windows PC lying around, running a 32-bit operating system such as Snow Leopard or Windows 98, XP or Windows 7, or some reports suggest there may even be a few that have been successful running Axis in compatibility mode on Windows 8 and 10. Having said that, you could set up a virtual machine on a current operating system running a 32-bit virtual environment. But while setting up a virtual machine is entirely possible, it can be a little bit fiddly if you don't know what you're doing, opposed to this rather crude but fairly simple method. So if you have an old Windows PC or Mac, such as my old Mac Mini here from 2009, running the Snow Leopard operating system, then you can create a go-between fairly easily, as I'll demonstrate in this clip. Having said all that, there appears to be ongoing developments for a similar Windows application, specifically for use with Akai S5000 and S6000 samplers. And as at the time of this recording, there is a beta version for the MPC4000. However, I should mention that it's not a revamped 64-bit version of Akai's Axis, it's very much independent of the Akai software, with its own unique feature set that you can acquire for a PayPal donation. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Failing that, if you like what you see, then I suggest trying it out. I've been using it like this for a little while now, plus if you map a shared folder on the computer running the Akai software, then you can transfer WAV files, native Akai SND files, or even AI files directly across from other computers in the same network, which is very handy. On top of that, Axis supports up to 32 simultaneous Akai samplers, which is crazy, but very handy if you have more than one compatible Akai sampler in your studio. If you don't have an older Mac or Windows PC, you can find this particular generation of computer on the second-hand market for around $100 or less. Alternatively, you might be lucky enough to have a friend or relative that has an old one they're ready to throw out. So let's get into how we can set it up on an old Mac. And then we'll look at how we can set it up on a Windows PC. To speed things up, I'll presume you have a Mac with a 32-bit operating system ready to go. I'll be using Snow Leopard, but I've heard the next operating system, Lion, might also work, provided it's the 32-bit edition with Rosetta component. Both these operating systems came in 64-bit versions, so make sure you have the 32-bit version. I'll leave links below where you can find them. But to be responsible, please back up anything of importance before trying any of this, and detach any hard drives that may contain your life's work. So, log in to your 32-bit Mac, take note of your username and password, as we'll need that again later. The first thing you want to do, if you haven't already done so, is connect your Mac to your local network, the same network as your main studio Mac. You may have Wi-Fi, I prefer tethering, using Ethernet cables myself, 
as I find it to be more stable, secure, and less likely to lag or drop out. Download and run the DMG file. Drop the Axis folder into your Applications folder, then restart your Mac. Again, you can find the download links in the description below. You should now be able to open the Axis software and expand the various sections, revealing any content inside your sampler's memory. I'll double click on the program inside my 4000 and now I get this graphic interface with the pages and controls that my 4000 has to offer. Then I can return to the main browser window and open the multi, where I get a full featured mixer that can manage my program's levels, panning, effect sends, subgroup routing, etc, etc. Further to that, if I return to the main browser, I can also browse for files on USB, hard drive, or the CD-ROM mounted on my 4000. And I can view, rename, and load any of these easily enough by clicking or right-clicking them and choosing an option from the context menu like so. And momentarily, you'll see the program or sample appear above. I should mention there's no sample editor as such. You're meant to use a third-party editor as Akai decided not to implement this. Instead, they give you an option to select a third-party piece of software, like Cool Editor or something. Then any changes made in that software were dumped into a folder, which then Axis would reload. However, being able to manage programs is still very handy, and it's quite responsive too. I should mention, if you drag and drop an AIF type file, the Axis software will convert it to WAV before transfer. That may be the same for Windows PCs, but I can't say for sure. Anyway, with that working, we'll now prepare the Mac for remote access from another Mac. So go to your Mac settings, look for the sharing icon, make sure the screen share box is checked and the file share box is checked. Review any user privileges so that you have the ability to read and write from the shared location. Alternatively, you could just adjust the public folder to read and write to keep things simple and make it more securely enhanced later if need be. The next trick is to be able to get access to this old Mac from a new Mac, which is now quite simple since we've enabled screen share. Using the old Mac login name and password, pull up a finder window and you should be able to see the old 32-bit Mac down the left-hand side. Click on that and then you should find screen share up in the right corner of your finder window. Click that and type in the username and password belonging to the 32-bit Mac. Check the Remember This Password box to bypass the login window going forward, and that's it. You can now use and control the Akai software from your main studio Mac. The thing I like about using the Mac Mini is that I don't need a monitor, nor mouse, nor keyboard. It's just a little box that I put under the desk out of the way. As long as it's got an Ethernet cable for network access, and a USB tethered to my Akai compatible sampler, it does the job. Now let's do the same for a Windows PC. I've got an old HP laptop with Windows XP Pro as its operating system. So first decompress and install the Axis version 2.53 application. Go through the motions with next, agree to the terms, you don't have to worry about the customer information. 
So next again, choose complete for the setup type or hit custom if you need to change the install folder. Once installed, we'll get a notification saying found new hardware. Click that and you should be presented with this found new hardware wizard. Click the option no, not this time. Then click install from a list or specific location. Then click don't search. I will choose the driver to install. On this page, click have disk. I've had this installed before, which is why you're seeing some entries above. So don't worry if you don't see anything in there. Then click browse and navigate to the decompressed access folder. Select the Akai driver, then OK. Select your model sampler, then next. And in a few moments, you should see a new notification appear saying your new hardware is installed and ready to use. At this point, it might be wise to restart Windows. I've had this installed before, so I don't really need to. But from here, similar to Mac users, you have all the bells and whistles available to you. On first load, patience is key. So give it a moment to download all the feature values and programs from your Akai sampler. Then, for example, if you double click on multi, you should see the lovely Z4 slash Z8 themed mixer. This is a part mixer, not a pad mixer, as some might expect. You can route effects buses, physical outputs, subgroups, etc., etc. And if we return to the main browser, we can double click a program and enter into the program features. Click envelopes, and again, edit the envelopes of any particular sample in real time. So it comes in handy if you need to sculpt envelopes for dozens of samples. Moving on from that, we can prepare this Windows PC for remote access by right clicking the My Computer icon. Visit the Remote tab. Make sure Allow Users to Connect Remotely is checked. Select Specific Users here if need be. And if you have any third party firewalls running, you may want to check to see if they're allowing remote desktop through via port 3389. As a side note, I'd recommend optimizing the performance. Again, right click My Computer, hit the Advanced tab, then click Settings under the Performance section, and select the Adjust for Best Performance radio button, as this will turn off most of the unnecessary graphic features. Click Apply and or OK. Finally, to share a drive or folder across your network, Double click my computer, then right click your drive and select sharing and security and check both options under network sharing, then apply. This will allow you to transfer files across your network to your 32-bit machine so you can drag and drop them into your sampler. I used the Microsoft Remote Desktop for Mac to log into the Windows PC, which I could have done just as easily from a modern Windows machine that comes with the remote desktop client application by default. And they're both fairly easy to configure. Just open a command prompt on your old Windows machine, type in ipconfig, then add the IP address into your remote desktop app and save it. I'd also suggest experimenting with the fixed resolutions and low bit color as less data throughput reduces lagginess while increasing responsiveness. I should add that while it's easy to remote into a Windows computer from a Mac, it's not as easy the other way around. You might need Google's Chrome Remote Desktop, VNC, or another third-party remote session application. 
For those only with Windows PCs, I strongly recommend using the Windows Pro editions of Windows as the remote desktop host is included in all versions of Windows Pro, opposed to Windows Home editions which don't come with the remote desktop host service. If you're stuck on a home edition of Windows, you could look into VNC or Chrome remote desktop. These generally won't be as fast or responsive, but they do work. Anyway, that's all for this clip. I hope that helped. If you dug that vibe, like and subscribe. Check out the parent channel, Instagram and website for more from Tone Lab. Thanks for watching and bye for now.